Hello and Happy New Year. We are kicking off our 2024 season with a wonderful concert um, this coming Saturday with Clayton Stevenson, who you, you see here before you. Uh, Clayton's a fantastic pianist. And we have him, we're doing the concert a little differently. Oftentimes we have the piano concerto on the first half of a concert, but this time we're gonna close the concert with the Rachmaninoff third piano concerto. On the first half of the program, uh, we're going to start with a piece, a new piece, uh, that was written in 2017 entitled Amen by Carlos Simon. And he is a composer. He wrote this originally for the concert band, University of Michigan concert band, but he orchestrated it for full symphonic orchestra. And it tells a story of his experience growing up in the Pentecostal church. So it has, just by the title, Amen, it has a lot of influences of gospel, spiritual, uh, spirituals that you hear in the church. And we see a different side of the orchestra. Then we contrast that with a piece by Maurice Ravel called Vos Nobles Sentimental. And it's a wonderful work for uh, orchestra, but it was really written for the piano. We were just on the radio and we played part of the piano version of it. Have you played much Ravel? Not too much, yeah. just a little bit, but it's. I'm fascinated to yeah. hear the orchestral version. Is it, is it hard to play Ravel's oh, music? Of course. Yes. Yeah, what's it's... the most difficult aspect of it, do you think? I think it's it's getting the color right. Yeah. Um, as you said, it's um, it's always about shades of color, and so it's not so much as in you know big contrasts like Beethoven does, you know, from pianissimo to fortissimo, but it's more of subtle changes in, in colors, and I think that's the most beautiful thing listening to Ravel because you get into these places where you're like, how did I get here? Yeah, you know, and, and something you said too is trying to make it sound easy. Yes. That is <laughs> That's the so hard <laughs> to try to make it sound easy. So, uh, but the harmony and the use of dissonance and color and, and the, the harmonic language that he uses makes it very difficult. But these are a group of waltzes that were originally written by uh, Franz Schubert of the same title, uh, probably about 50 years pr prior to this piece. We also, you also asked me if which came first, La Valse or these groups of this group of, uh, of, of waltzes. And actually, La Valse came about 10 years after this. Uh -huh. So, but you can hear little yes. elements of yes. La Valse in this piece that influenced him to write that, that wonderful work. It's a group of eight waltzes that um, really explore different colors of the orchestra, but they're all waltzes and they each has a very different character to them. Wonderful character pieces. We'll take an intermission after that, and then we come to the rock yes, and <laughs> third piano concerto. A lot of notes. How many notes? notes. Uh, 30,000. 30,000 so. notes. I don't think he knew about the Guinness World Records. Are you being paid by it. the notes? I, I hope not. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Different perspectives, I guess. Different perspectives for sure. Can you tell us a little bit about the rock and third piano concerto? Um, this is like the epitome of all piano concertos. I think this is, this is the peak. And it's so hard, but it's also has the most beautiful moments in this piece. And the hard part, as you said, is making it easy because it is so hard. There's so many notes to take care of. There's so many notes in the orchestra. There's right. so many notes in the piano. Right. Making it all come together and you know having that lush texture, but with those singing melodies is, is such a challenge. But I think with you and with the Symphony of Southeast Texas, it's a lot easier. Well, it, it, we, have, I don't, we haven't done this piece since I've been here. I've been here 15 years. And um, yeah, putting everything together, we had our first rehearsal last night, and we're, it was the first time me, you meeting the orchestra, me working with you in this context. And like I said, I, I came in thinking like, oh, I've got this figured out, and it's just a, it's a hard piece to it's put together. Piece, yes. And one of the things you said, too, is that it gets harder and harder as we move through it. Yes. So it's tiring. Oh, sure. It's like a, it's like a marathon. You're yeah. just constantly you know, getting more hurdles and harder you know, passages as you get to the end. And sure. so you're getting more and more tired, but he's asking for more and more. And so you're, you're just digging deep and you know, hoping you can give it all. <laughs> do, do you think the second piano concerto of Rachmaninoff is more popular than the third? What do you think? I would, I think the second one is more like a collection of songs. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, it's very melodic. Uh, the third one I think is more complex in mm -hmm. he's trying to portray different sides of, of himself and different emotions. I think um, 
the third one, what's so hard is that you come from, you know, this very serene opening yeah. theme, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you get into all these notes, and then, you know, he's frantic, he's, uh, you know, there's so, so much anxiety, and then you get to, you know, these luscious climaxes. It's how do you frame all of these things together yeah. Yeah. and make sure it's not, you know, bits of pieces here and there, right. but it's a, a big concerto, and he had this, um, you know, this mission behind it. I think, you know, the history of piano concertos, all the piano concertos were written because they wanted to push, you know, music mm -hmm. forward. They wanted mm -hmm. to see what the limits of the piano were. And I think Rachmaninoff truly found the limits of the piano. Yeah. Uh, he uses, I think, every single note was he on a that piano. He was a pianist. Yeah, okay. Great pianist. Oh, okay. And that explains it. My hands, I don't think <laughs> his hands were, like, hands, were yeah, like this. Really? Yeah, wow. <laughs> he could reach, you know, from C, the next octave, to, to G. So, yeah. you know, just such a wide span. And I think that's why for him his music was easy, but for everybody else in the world, not not so easy. It's and very interesting. <laughs> it's yeah. a struggle. I mean, he he really was one of the great virtuosos, and we were talking about these com like com um, composers like Chopin who wrote, but he Rachmaninoff really did take care of the orchestra as well and give us something to kind of sink our teeth into. So we're not just being a shadow of, of the course, soloist. Yeah. We are actually integrated into the overall piece. For me, Rock Three is almost like you know the Brahms concertos mm, because mm -hmm. the Brahms concertos Absolutely. are like symphonies with mm -hmm. a piano mm -hmm. and Rock. Three is almost like that too. Yeah. You have a symphony, you know, all these uh, different instruments playing all these melodies, and then you have the piano uh, beside it. And I think that's the the beauty of, of these masterworks. Well, we are so excited to have yes. you joining us, and I'm we want people well. to come out. We have three very contrasting pieces: uh, the Carlos Simon piece, Amen. We've got the Ravel, which is pianistic in a different type of way, but we're going to hear it in the orchestra. And then, of course, one of the truly, truly great masterpieces of the classical repertoire, uh, the Rachmaninoff Third Piano Concerto. So come and join us with your Symphony of Southeast Texas. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful broadcast. Yes. And we will see you at the Julie Rogers Theater. Yes. Go SOST. <laughs>